There's many different layer one chains. How is Aptos special? Aptos, I think a lot of it, you know, what, what makes us Aptos really different, I think comes with its founding history. And so I'll kind of walk through that. So back in, I was at Meta for 10 years, uh, working on a variety of different things in data infrastructure. Um, and uh, in 2018, uh, there, was an, there was an effort to build out um, a, a, a network that could support remittances, payments, and some largest use cases in the world uh, with distribution from Meta. And it was kind of, the project was called Libra, and over time kind of evolved to include things like Novi and Diem. Um, DM being an association of partners that could um, build out a, a top tier technology stack that could support their their ambitions. Um, I joined the team pretty early on uh, in 2018, uh, started working in the consensus space, and then overall became the, the Web3 blockchain lead uh, for, for, for Meta. And during that experience, you know, it, I think what really resonated a lot with our team was very philosophical. Uh, it was... You know, I've worked in data infrastructure for a long time, so a lot of challenges in terms of how do we process massive amounts of data, extract lots of insights, uh, and use it to power products uh, you know, that, are, that have billion, billion plus audiences. Um, with that knowledge, I think it's, this is a very unique opportunity where we can change the way the internet looks and runs, where everyone can have access to it, everyone can own a piece of it, everyone can participate as much as they like into it. And so this mission of building out a public utility, I think, stuck with a lot of us um, mm -hmm. as the core mission of what our technology was designed to do. As a part of that, it was really like, you know, how do we reach billions of people? Uh, that's our kind of our MO and meta was, you know, that's, you know, we, we definitely want a lot of scale and there's a lot of benefits from that type of scale of economy. Um, and so when you think about how do you kind of reach that, that level of scale, uh, it's, it comes down to what are the systems you're building underneath it? What is the blockchain technology? What is the way we think about also the developer experience of constructing applications in a way that is very, very different than the way you think about coding today. Um, most people think about coding as, you know, I, I develop something, I test something out, it has some bugs, I fix it, I roll those fit forward, uh, fixes forward. Um, and that's the kind of traditional developer cycle. When it comes to smart contract development, that doesn't work. Uh, we can't have bugs there. We can't have um, funds or assets being lost. Uh, and, you know, in order for people to be able to trust that this is a reliable infrastructure, we decided to kind of start from, from the grounds up in that mission. And so with that, a couple of key technologies were built out. One was the DM blockchain and the other one, the move language. The move language um, is a very different way of thinking about writing smart contract development. It is a way that is designed to make sure that people can actually own their assets, that they're not stuck in a contract uh, that, you know, kind of has a, a map of ownership and those things, assets are unreachable. Um, it prevents simple programmer mistakes through uh, today preventing dynamic dispatch, um, but over time, things that we can actually enable in the future. Uh, it also prevents the ability, of, the way you think about things is more around you just can't make certain types of mistakes. You have a coin uh, module and that coin module is unable to accidentally like just drop money on the floor or forget about it or multiply or increase that supply without going through proper uh, proper functions and constraints uh, that make sure and permissions uh, to ensure kind of you don't make those mistakes as a programmer. And so it's fundamentally thinking about how do you get from ideation into production not only just quickly, but also safely as possible, and that being a game changer in the way that developers can bring their, their ideas to life in, in a new network was one key difference. Another key difference is the infrastructure. You know, We looked at things like Ethereum and Tendermint and others, very promising, but we didn't feel it was designed for scale. And so with that, we had to redesign the way we think about how does scale look like in this space? And so going and drawing back on, on my knowledge of, um, of system design, I also, before this, I worked on uh, high-performance computing, supercomputing, uh, places like Argonne, Sandia, um, and, uh, 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 and uh, Los Alamos as well. And, um, you know, those systems are designed to, to have massive parallelism to support the largest applications of the world around protein folding and other very hard scientific challenges. And you think about the way you design a system, it should be supporting high levels of parallelism. It should be highly concurrent. It should make sure that programming models integrated very carefully into the system so it can support those, those key innovations. And, you know, at the end of the day, it looks like a decentralized database to most people. It is just very fast, highly performant, uh, very low latency. And so you can build on top of it uh, the kind of internet applications you see today, except for they're based on Web3. They are owned by the users. They are a 
permissionless database that everyone can interact and agree on settlement on. And so those two things, I think, are the key, um, the key kind of pieces that we started off in 2018 with. I think another key uh, differentiator is upgradability. And the ability for the system to be able to change very rapidly over time through technology advances is super important because this space is moving very, very quickly. And so being able to design that system where, where we said, look, we have a mechanism for being able to change your consensus protocol uh, as a part of a governance update uh, that's voted for on chain. The ability for us to evolve the way accounts are looked at over time and support account abstraction natively, uh, or the way that we are able to kind of scale out uh, in many different ways, from even from leveraging more resources on a single machine to also going across multiple machines over time as a way to kind of scale up and scale down the, the same way you think about cloud infrastructure, also very, very key. And also add new features like on-chain randomness, uh, which is very interesting and maybe the, one of the best important use cases of blockchain today. So it's a combination of starting off from how do we just support billions of users from a systems perspective and from a language, uh, a smart contract development perspective to how do we also iterate really quickly with technology over time? And the last piece I would say is providing that user experience that looks exactly like the internet so we can support those 5 billion internet users today while there's only maybe, you know, tens of millions of, of kind of Web3 users and growing that, you know, that, that audience into, into the larger internet audience, uh, internet audience is a very key for us. So those are the kind of key differentiators, I think, from the Aptos perspective, um, from a, from a philosophy standpoint, from a practicality standpoint, what we've also shown is that Aptos has the highest performance out there in terms of scalability. We run, we, we do things differently in terms of transparency. We, you know, there's a lot of noise in the space. Okay. We're the fastest, we're the most scalable, so on and so forth. These experiments are often not repeatable. They're not, you know, they're not uh, end to end. And so what we've done is taken a very different approach. Like from our history, we look at things like there are lots of database benchmarks out there. And there's a way to kind of measure these databases against each other through TPC, uh, for example, which is a benchmarking suite. Um, we don't have that in blockchain today. So we start to build out those processes. We start to put, out, put together those infrastructures and the frameworks for us to say, like, here's our framework for evaluation. Uh, here's our experimental setup. Here's the machine configurations. Anyone can run those experiments, have verifiable and repeatable results. And what we were to demonstrate was we could get more than two billion transactions uh, per second, uh, sorry, per day, in a in a in a minute like environment that seventy plus node operators witnessed and verified, which is more than fourteen times what Visa can do. And that's instant settlement, unlike when Visa where it kind of settles and then kind of settles again over time. So, I think you know, those are kind of the things that we think really separate us from from other infrastructures out there.